here, and today I'm going to show you my 127 extra credit project. So the project is essentially uh, combining the aspects of the 127 class, which is the microprocessor design class, where we use an LPC Expresso uh, that has a LPC 1769 on it, as well as combining parts of the Compi 127 class, which uses the Nexus 4 DDR um, Xilinx FPGA, and programming that with Verilog. And the whole point of this entire system is to use the LPC Expresso uh, to communicate over to the FPGA, which has a couple modules um, used in order to, uh, has a couple, has a design that's meant for controlling these servos. The FPGA will generate a pulse, uh, a pulse wave that will essentially be equal to that, or will be a RC servo signal. And the actual amount of duration of the pulse is actually labeled out here. And then the channel that's being sent to is here. And the actual... The actual uh, servos are, are detected, detected here. So channel 1 would be the servo here up to cha uh, channel 16. And then the zero of channels actually over on the side here. What we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to attempt to make it dance. So we'll go to bug mode. Wait for it to set up. Okay. Okay. Wait, what was the question? Oh, yeah. It was... That's the initialization. Right, so it initializes. I can actually type in the channel 20, which doesn't actually exist, and this will just force it to actually hold on. Give it one more command value, and that should get it to move. Okay. Now let's say I just want to control just one. I'll select channel one. And then I'll select uh, 1,000, which should make it move, and which make uh, uh, server number one move 45 degrees to the right. So we're going to take a look over at uh, server number one, and there you go. I'm going to make server number two move 45, 45 degrees to the left, and so on and so forth. And that's pretty much the design. Um, the PCB is completely um, made, manufactured myself, it was manufactured at Bay Area Circuits. I can get this from the uh, Xilinx website. And the Expresso can be found out. Now, uh, all this information will be uh, other information about the setup, the code, where you can find the parts, stuff like that, will be on my GitHub and on the description of this video on YouTube. So, yeah. Um, oh, and one last thing I was going to show off was this little display. I thought just to gild the lily, you know, add a little special stuff. Uh, I'm going to make number three move over, but this actual display just displays what the potentiometer, I'm sorry, the potentiometer, the servo should be positioned to. So I'm going to move um, channel three to, let's say, 1,000 or 1,500, well, actually just 1,000. And you'll see the actual dial move from left all the way to the right hand side. Maybe a little difficult to see. So as you can actually hear it, you can hear it moving, and then this actual thing shows you where it's supposed to be at. So the last value that you sent, it'll demonstrate what position the servo should be in. We have a little LED that indicates whether or not the position is within the 90 degree angle area. And if it's beyond, so let's say we go, uh, we'll show yellow if you go beyond that. Uh, we'll go beyond uh, 90 degrees and go up to the 180 degree um, area. And if you go beyond that even more, I'll go over to, let's say, zero. It'll go even further, and then the LED will go red. So it'll show that it's now an invalid position for the servo. At least most servos. Yeah, that's pretty much that.